the coronavirus is, how we think this virus spreads, how we prevent it, how it's being treated, what are the numbers, and wow, there is a lot of bad information out there. So I'm going to wrap up by talking to you about some good sources of information. So we're going to talk biology. I'm a biologist. I'm going to nerd out. Hopefully you'll nerd out with me. The coronavirus is called that because if you look at this micrograph down on the bottom, it looks like the virus has a little crown, like that Burger King style crown, and that's how it got its name. Um, there are a lot of coronaviruses out there, but there are four main types. The first type is the type that causes most of the common colds. Who's ever had a cold? So you have successfully survived a coronavirus. You've actually probably successfully survived a lot. And for those of you that are in the room and under 30, that's actually a very good thing for COVID-19. For those of us over 30, I'll talk about it in a minute. We're still, we're still good, wash your hands. <laughs> the next type is SARS. This was around in 2003. It had a total of 8,000 cases and a, and a total number of deaths of about 800. And SARS went away. Then we have MERS. Has anybody heard of MERS? What, what animal did it come from? Do you remember? Camels, right? Okay, so coronaviruses are zoonotic. It means that they often go from one species to another, and that kind of event is called a spillover. That's what we think happened with COVID-19. We don't know what animal that was yet, though, because remember, when did this come out? December of 2019, right? Like, this is still a very, very new thing. Um, so, let's talk a little bit deeper about the biology. What, what kind of symptoms do you get with COVID, Dina? Cough, fever, and shortness of breath. It's those three. So using that logic, what type of cells in your body is COVID going to infect? Respiratory, especially your lungs. And for all of our AP bio peeps, you should notice down on that bottom, right? Uh, What's happening is that COVID actually binds to special receptor proteins deep in your lungs, and that's why it causes pneumonia in some of the cases where people are getting sick with it and having more than a mild illness. Um, if you really want to nerd out, MERS is a worse virus because it binds to a different receptor protein that also attaches to your kidneys. So MERS can cause your kidneys to shut down, and COVID does not do that. Okay. Um, current biology students, raise your hand. What's that picture up in the top middle? What's it look like? It's a phylogenetic tree, that's right. So we've been actually able to sequence the DNA of this virus, and they're all very similar to each other. So it's not mutating rapidly like we would see from a flu. Okay. All right, so let's talk about transmission. COVID is a respiratory virus, and it's spread through what's called droplet transmission. That means that if I am within about six feet or two meters of you, and I'm sick with it, and I cough, I can transmit that to you. If I am across the mall, or the airport, or the city, or the state, and I cough, I am not transmitting it to you. Okay, so that should be reassuring. We think that it might also have some limited threat spread through something called a fomite. It's one of my favorite epi words. A fomite is a surface that you can touch. So let's say, for example, I cough in a completely inappropriate way, and instead of, how are you supposed to cover your coughs? Right? My kids call this the vampire dab. Right. That's how they do that. Okay? So if I cough like this, <laughs> and then I go touch the doorknob, why would you do that, people? Right? Okay? And then some unsuspecting student comes by and touches that doorknob, and then scratches their nose, that's, that's fomite transmission. We prevent that by washing our hands, okay? Um, one of the things that's interesting about COVID is that we think people might be infection dur infectious during what's called the prodrome period. So I'm infected, but I don't have symptoms. So if you're hearing about cases that don't have origin from another country, that's why. It just means that we think maybe a lot of people are asymptomatic. So they're getting infected with COVID, but they're not getting sick from it. Okay. Um, incubation period is 2 to 14 days. So if you've heard people are being quarantined for 14 days, they just have to stay at home until that 14 days passes, because if you don't get symptoms by 14 days, you're not going to get them. Uh, the R-naught. So how infectious is this 
this disease? Well, it has an R naught of about two, which means each infected person could infect about two other people. Flu has an R naught of between two and three. So we think it's about as infectious as flu. And measles has an R naught of 15. Okay. Vaccinated. Uh, that, yeah, that's a lot. It's the most contagious disease we have. Now, who's heard a news report about the fatality rate of COVID? What number have you been hearing? What about two or two and a half percent. There's no way we can estimate that. And in reality, it's probably much lower because disease is like this iceberg. Most of the cases of this disease are asymptomatic, most likely, which means we're, we're not doing those calculations right. So that number is going to drop. So don't let that number scare you. How do we treat it? Well, right now, we're just in the early days of figuring out how to diagnose it, and we don't have to depend on CDC only anymore, so lots of places can test it. So there's probably going to be more cases reported in the next couple of weeks because we can test for it better. Most people, about 80%, who get infected with COVID and show symptoms have very mild illness, like that common cold, remember? It's a relative of the common cold. About 20% are going to have more serious illness, and about 5% are going to need to be hospitalized and might, might be critical. What we know about those patients who are very ill is that they tend to be older, and they tend to have other health problems, like heart disease, diabetes, and things like that. Remember I said if you were under 30, you were, you were in luck? Yeah? So coronaviruses cause the common cold. And as a child or a young adult, you have recently had a lot of coronaviruses because that's what kids do, right? Especially little ones, right? They touch everything and that. Okay? So you have lots of fresh antibodies and memory B cells floating around in your bloodstream to protect you. Those of us who are older, it's been a while since we've been exposed and we don't have as many of, that, of those immune cells floating around as you guys. So the data shows that actually young people are must, much, much, much less likely to get COVID than the rest of us. It's not a bad thing for you, right? Is there a vaccine? No, we just discovered that this was a thing two months ago. Normally vaccines take about 15 to 20 years to make. But we are hopeful that in about a year, we will have at least one to test. Because remember that SARS virus I told you about? They started making one for SARS, but then when SARS went away, they kind of slowed down. So we've already started the, pro the process of making a coronavirus vaccine. So it's on its way. Okay? In the meantime, the best thing that we can do is prevent the spread of this infection. And the way that we are all going to do that is not by panicking, but by... Washing your hands. So let's talk about washing your hands really quickly. I've seen this in grown-ups and teenagers and kids. Turning on the water and sticking your hands under the water and then turning the water off is not washing your hands. Putting a squirt of soap onto your hands and rubbing it for two seconds is not effectively washing your hands. It's always important to do a good job, especially now. 20 seconds under running water. There's lots of great videos on how to do it. We can come practice with some glow germ. They're all super dirty. In my classroom, but 20 seconds. And you want to make sure that you get the backs of your hands, that you get your fingernails, that you get your wrists. Actually use soap and water. And if you see one of your friends doing a sad job washing their hands, call them out on it. We're all in this together. So, let's talk about perspective. About how many cases are there in the U.S.? Less than 100. Okay? It was confirmed late last night that there are currently two cases from the same household in uh, Georgia. They are isolated and they are mild cases. So they're not in the hospital and their family contacts have been isolated as well because that's what we do. We quarantine people who have been exposed to those who are sick, and they stay home for two weeks so that they're not passing that infection on. Globally, as of this morning, there are 91,000 cases. Now, these are people who were sick enough to be tested. You remember that iceberg? Right? Okay, so there are a lot of people who are, are, not, that, who are not that ill who haven't been counted yet. So let's talk perspective. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Okay, remember this is scary because it's new and it's different. But if you want to think about things that are more risky in the U.S. right now, it's flu. 
In the United States during this flu season, influenza has caused about 40 million illnesses. And there have been less than 100 cases of COVID-19 in the United States. So it's scary because it's new. So where can you go for good information? CDC is a great source. They've got lots of levels of information. The WHO, if you want a global perspective. Johns Hopkins, especially for those of you who are data nerds and you like maps, they update it regularly and you can see where all the cases are. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, Ms. Adams, I'm super scared and right now I just want to go to Costco and buy masks, masks and Easy Mac and toilet paper and just like shelter in place. You don't do that, okay? Who needs the masks right now? The healthcare workers need them. Please do not buy and hoard masks. They need them, okay? They are on the front lines of taking care of patients who are sick. If you want to know what you can do to prepare for this or any emergency, just go to ready.gov. They've got information about how do you keep food at home, how do you make sure you have medicines you need in any type of emergency, not just this. So, I hope this was helpful. Remember, keep calm, wash your hands, and come see me if you have questions.